All right, folks, today I am showing you how to create a vintage sort of Victorian style book cover like this um, with a cloth, cloth band texture. And um, I made a set of 31 of these in over the, the month of July and August. And um, so I got a lot of practice in how to make things like this and figured out a few sort of little tips and tricks. So I thought what I'd do is share with you how I make these um, using this magical water plants of the Mediterranean as an example. We'll open a new document. And the size I've been using for these, or the, the size I'm going to use for this at least, is um, six by nine inches with a quarter of an inch added to uh, just, just for, the, for the bleed. So let's go create. And we want it to be on 300 dpi there as well. So what you'll need is you'll need some sort of book texture. And this is actually the back of a cloth band book that I had on my shelf. Um, and there are textures that you can use that are, are free to use online as well. So um, if you don't have a hardback book easily to hand, then you can always do that. Um, and you also need a gold texture. This is very easy to make in Photoshop. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. Um, or you can use one that's pre-existing. Again, there are lots of those online. And then you'll need the drawing. So this tutorial isn't going to cover how to actually do the drawing itself. Um, that will take a little bit longer than the space I have here. So I'm going to drag that onto the canvas here and just position it in the place that I want it, make it a wee bit smaller, like so. I'm gonna hide the background. And what we want to do is separate this out into the black and the white so that we can have them on different layers. And the reason for that is if you were to be uh, sc screen printing these, you would want each color in a, a separate layer. So it's just sort of good form to do that. And it's really easy to do as well. So I'm just going to up the contrast a bit on this. And we just want that, those darks to be particularly dark. So I'll just do this on the adjustment layers a couple of times. Like so. And that should do it. Then merge those layers. And then we'll just call this original drawing. So the next thing to do is go to select and color range. Oops, there we are. And what we want here is that black. So there we are, it's the black selected. And then if I go, I'm, I'm on a Mac here. Um, so if I go, the Photoshop command is command J to put that all on a new layer. So now we've got all of that black there in one place, which is super handy. Now, one thing I do usually with this is I just lock that and then I go in with the brush tool, make the brush nice and big and just go over and make sure that that's all nice and black. It's not actually making a big difference on this one, but it does on some designs. So there we go. I can unlock that and hide that top layer. And then I'm going to do the same with the white. So select color range and then I'll go there like so. And then we go command J. And then we can hide that original drawing, pop that down the bottom. And there we are. We've got the two separate ones there. Label the layers, always useful. Uh, so this is white and that's black for now at least. Um, these colors will change obviously. So select that and then go into here. We'll grab that book texture, drag it in. And then I want to, I'm holding down shift and option to keep that nice and central. And we can bring that out and just position it in the place that we want it. That looks about right. And so as you'll see, we've got this box around the white bit here, which we don't want. So let's select W, which is the magic wand tool, and we'll get rid of that. As you'll see, that didn't actually get rid of 
all of it in there and we've still got some wee patches so I'll just go in and clean up those. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now what I want to do is hide that black layer and we'll decide what colors we want on here. So seeing as the background is a sort of blue color and I will tinker around with the black background a little bit shortly, but I'll probably just choose that and make it a bit more greeny because I'm gonna make the background a bit more green as well. And then choose a darker shade of that and I would suggest if you're doing a design like this to keep the colors as simple as possible. Um, so we go in and lock that layer, which now means if I draw, I'm just drawing on that one layer, which is really handy. So the reason you want to keep the colors nice and simple is, well, for one thing, it, it makes the whole artwork process a lot easier. But I do think that a, a simple color palette is always better than a, a more complicated one. Um, especially in a in a design like this where it, it has to catch the eye nice and quickly and easily. Uh, so yeah, with with these, none of the designs, uh, I, I didn't use more than uh, four colors altogether. That's including the, the foil and the, the cloth band texture for any of these. So this one uses four colors, but most of my designs used three. I'm just noticing I've got a few little bits down here as well, which you'd probably want to go in and just clean up any bits like that. Um, and you will notice as well that in general, this is a bit raggedy around the edges. And I actually quite like that on a, a design like this, just because it kind of emulates that, that printed look. So the edges aren't nice and clean. So the next thing I'd do is play around with this color because I'm not happy with how blue this color is. So we go to adjustments and then hue slash saturation. And then we play around with this. You can make it all sorts of different colors that you probably never dreamed of. So I'm going to go for a slightly more greeny blue. And I'm just going to down the saturation a little bit and the lightness as well. And yeah, you can play around with these levels as much as you like. The other thing I've just noticed is that this isn't particularly parallel. So if I just go Command T, which will transform it, or allow me to transform it, I can just rotate that so that that spine bit is looking a bit more parallel there. Nice. And again, if you didn't want any of these spots, you could go in, just want to rasterize that. Um, you just do that by clicking on it with a brush or an eraser or anything like that. And then if you use the spot healing tool, you can get rid of a bit like that. Although I quite like the texture of that bit there and this damaged bit in the corner, I think that gives it quite a nice character. So I'm just going to leave that. So as you'll see, that has changed the color of it quite a bit. I'm pulling this layer white, but it's now green. And actually what I want to do is I want to take this bit here, the, the white bit, and put that onto a separate layer again. Again, go back to that idea of if we were screen printing this. I could do this a number of different ways, but I think I'm just gonna lasso tool it. The other thing you could do is go in and color select it, or you could use the other selection tool. Lovely. So then if I go Command J, that'll pop all of that onto a new layer. So then the next thing to do would be to yeah, hide that one there and do the same thing again. Or you could just go in with the eraser tool. Nice and easy to do it like that. And just block out that so that all that we've got on this particular layer is that green color. And I think if you were doing a, a cover like this with lots of different layers, it would be such a hassle to keep them all on different layers. It's another good reason to just use a limited color palette. Just gonna relabel these layers here. Now we're going to give this a bit more pizzazz and go in. Drag on there our gold color and it just needs to cover the bit where the design is. We hit enter. And this is my favorite bit because it always makes it look amazing. So right click on the on the layer. Um, this is the gold layer and then create clipping mask. Wonderful. That's that's looking pretty good. That's, I would say, pretty much finished. There are a few things I would change 
just in terms of the composition and this is something that you might want to do earlier on if there's anything that you're not happy with in the drawing um that's just going to give it a bit more balance there yeah that's looking better so yeah definitely you could go in and add a sort of an extra texture over the top of this um just to give it see if i down the opacity a bit on I've got the wrong layer selected on this layer then you can see a bit of that cloth band texture through it so it might be nice to leave it a little bit opaque there just to give it that extra sense of realism because when you're printing on fabric like this some of the fabric is likely to come through it's not necessarily going to be completely flat so actually this is more a sort of pink color than white um, which is what I used in the original and that one there is just yeah probably only leave it about there because it has got that sort of whitish um, that pinkish color in the white there so I don't want the blue coming through too much but that's enough just to make it believable that that's a um, that's printed on there you could use use an artwork like this to make prints or you could use it as part of a dust jacket for a, an actual book or a notebook um, all sorts of ways that you could use artwork like this and of course this isn't limited to books either if you wanted to get that kind of texture and that gold texture as well on a on a bit of fabric then this would be the way to do it if you're interested in seeing my work and seeing the the whole set of these that I did then um, they are on my website which is hollydunnedesign.com and they're also on my Instagram which is at hollydunnedesign and I'm also at Holly Dunn Design on Twitter if you'd like to follow me there. Let me know in the comments if any of this was useful or if you'd like me to do further tutorials on sort of more complex designs and how to deal with those. Um, that's definitely something that I could do. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.